Now we're going to look at another classic um, article in philosophy, although this one considerably later than the Russell um, article. This one is published, I believe, in the 60s by a guy called Keith Donnellan. And it discusses uh, the theories both of Russell, who we've just looked at, but also of uh, P.F. Strawson. Um, Strawson wrote a, an article criticizing Russell that Russell did not take kindly to. Uh, maybe that's because uh, Strawson was at Oxford and Russell was at Cambridge. Uh, call, uh, Strawson's article is called On Referring and uh, Russell's article is called On Denoting and the distinction is important. Uh, we're not going to look at Strawson's article, although you can get a fair idea of it from reading Donnellan's article. Um, but essentially, uh, Strawson's position is that um, we should focus more on the speakers of language uh, and less on the language itself. So, Russell focuses on how language itself picks out things in the world. And when we look at uh, language itself, statements in language can denote in that they can pick something out in the world. They can be about that thing in the world. That's what language can do. Um, and Russell, of course, says on denoting. That's what he's talking about. Whereas Strawson, who is part of this school at the mid-century in Oxford, where there, it was f under the influence of uh, Wittgenstein, focusing much more on the users of language than language itself, and focusing on how it is that people can pick things out in the world. Now, using language to do so, but it's the people doing the picking out. And when that happens, that's called referring. So people can refer to things in the world. Language can denote things in the world. Um, Strawson's attack on Russell, uh, I don't know, I think it's widely considered to be a bit wide of the mark, and as I said, Russell gives kind of a snippy response. So I thought I'd skip that and uh, talk about uh, Donnellan's description, because it's a, it's a very nice example of uh, philosophers giving good examples and discussing the implication of their, those examples, even if it's about this uh, kind of uh, narrow subject matter of, again, definite descriptions. Remember, definite descriptions are descriptions beginning with the word the. Now, slightly confusingly, the main example that Donnellan gives is Smith's murderer uh, is a definite description, but of course you could rewrite that as the murderer of Smith. The important thing about definite descriptions is they refer to unique entities. So whomever Smith's murderer is, there's only one of them, it is assumed, unless it's like murder on the Orient Express, if you know that story. Okay, Donnellan wants to say, wants to criticize both Russell and Strawson uh, in their theories of definite descriptions. And if you read Donnellan's article, Russell comes off better than Strawson because Russell um, gives pretty much a correct view, according to Donnellan, of one of the two kinds of the uses of definite description, the kind he calls the attributive use. Whereas, uh, you might think Strawson would give the referential use, but no, he gives, he says some things that sound like the referential use, but then uh, Donnellan says he just says some things that are flat out false. I'm not going to go into too much detail about that. Mainly, I'm just going to focus on the distinction and explain it, because it's a, a nice, in the old-fashioned use of the word nice, distinction. All right, so, Donnellan insists that Smith's murderer, the definite description Smith's murderer, can be used attributively or referentially, and it's not clear uh, which way it's used just by looking at it in a sentence. Um, 
And the, the, the thing that he disagrees with both Russell and Strawson on is he thinks that it is possible to say something true in, the senten in a sentence containing a definite description, even if there is nothing that meets that description. Uh, both Russell and Strawson denies this, deny this. So, for example, we've already seen um, Russell's analysis of the King of France is bald. He says that has to be false because the King of France is bald. When you paraphrase that in, in the real underlying uh, logical language that conveys the information being conveyed by the King of France is bald, it comes out as there exists a thing that is the, a king and is bald, a yeah, king of France and is bald, and there's only one of them. And that's a false statement because there doesn't exist such a thing. Whereas what Donnellan is going to say is, is that it is possible to say something true using a definite description, even if there is nothing that fits that definite description. Uh, and this happens in the referential use, which is a, a, a use that uh, Donnellan insists that uh, Russell completely overlooked. All right, so what is the distinction? Okay, there's two ways to use Smith's murderer in this statement. There is what's called the attributive use. And when you're using a definite description in the attributive sense, it means that you are denoting, or, or if, you're, if you're saying it, you are referring, because referring is what people do. You, by stating a sentence involving a definite description, uh, can, refer, uh, can only refer to whomever fits that description. So you can uh, refer to them without even knowing who they are. So if I talk about, I come across, um, I, I like the way uh, Donnellan puts this. Um, he has uh, a nice turn of phrase. Um, suppose first that we come across, across poor Smith foully murdered from the brutal manner of the killing and the fact that Smith was the most lovable person in the world, we might exclaim, Smith's murderer is insane. I will assume, to make it a simple case, that in a quite ordinary sense, we do not know who murdered Smith. Okay, we can still, uh, when we say Smith's murderer is insane, we are denoting someone. Who? Whoever fits that description. Wherever, whoever or wherever, uh, Smith's murderer is. Now, Smith's murderer might be perfectly sane, in which case um, we are saying something false. Because suppose, for all we know, Smith's lovability was just surface and he was actually a horrible abuser in his private life and finally met um, the fate that he deserved uh, from an entirely rational actor. Well, in that case, the statement, Smith's murderer is insane, is false. We don't know that. Our statement, Smith's murderer is insane, denotes the actual person who uh, murdered Smith, and we don't know them, and we don't know that, in fact, they're perfectly sane. Um, that's the attributive sense. So in that sense, when you use a, a definite description attributively, you are picking out whomever the description fits. And if there is nobody whom the, the description fits, then it fails to refer as in uh, Russell's example of the King of France is bald. That's where you're using it attributively because you're talking, you're, you're talking about whomever it is is the King of France. That's the attributive use. But what Russell did not notice uh, is that actually there are common instances of using definite descriptions to refer to someone who doesn't fit that description. Um, so, for example, uh, you, uh, he gives the example of, um, oh yes, I, I like this example of, um, yes, uh, this is interesting too. Uh, he says we can use reference even in questions, uh, which is important because if you take a logic class, questions are uh, immediately ruled out as things that um, express propositions. But we can still pick people out in asking a question. 
and he gives the example, who is the man drinking a martini? So you see someone, uh, you see someone at a party holding a martini glass, you can tell this is a mid-century article, you know, you picture Mad Men or something. Um, somebody's uh, drinking a martini and you and a friend are looking at that person and you say, who is the man drinking a martini? Clearly, you are picking out the person holding the martini glass. Now, it turns out that actually there isn't a martini in the glass. There's just water. So, attributively, you do not. Your sentence does not pick out that person. But referentially, you successfully refer to that person, even though they're not drinking a martini. So this is an example uh, of where you can refer to someone using a definite description of whom the definite description is not true. And that's a perfectly common uh, use. And he even gives an example where uh, you might think, OK, uh, this is only successful if somebody believes that the um, description fits that person. And he says, no. You can um, believe, you, you can visit the palace of someone that you don't think is the rightful king. You know, imagine a, a Trump voter um, going to see Biden and they say, I'm here to see the president, right? When in fact they believe that Trump is the real president. Now, in using the president, they mean to pick out somebody that they don't believe is the president. And suppose uh, the people at, who are meeting them know that they, they feel this way, and maybe those people are also Trump voters too and don't believe that it's the president. They still know that the person being picked out is Biden, even though they don't believe that the, uh, uh, the description fits that person. So reference, when it's an action done by people using language, can be successfully done even when uh, using a definite description, even when the description does not apply. Um, now, what's the upshot of this? Well, that depends on uh, your view of language. Maybe Donnellan is revealing that a complete theory of meaning cannot be accomplished as Russell hoped, by just looking at language in isolation from the people who use it. And, it's, and certainly this was Strawson's point. Strawson says uh, Russell's project is uh, fundamentally flawed because he's just looking at the language as if it just sat on a page with no one saying it. But uh, you cannot ignore the people using the language um, in a theory of meaning. You, you, your theory of meaning will be incomplete if you just focus on language sort of sitting there inert as if it's in a book. Uh, the full theory of meaning has to look at the people using the language and presumably their mental states too. And as we shall see, this, uh, is, this idea of meaning is fully developed um, in particularly by a guy called Grice, another Oxford philosopher who, um, was, who taught Strawson. Uh, and Grice says that meaning is something that people do, which is very much not what Russell believes. Russell, uh, Russell's theory of language is about how language in, a in isolation means. So, you know, to support Russell's view, uh, you could say that if all humankind died out and left books behind, the books would still mean something, even though there are no people to read them or people to uh, uh, think of the words. And, uh, you know, words that we, words on scrolls that we have, haven't yet discovered that are hidden away in, in uh, caves that are written in a language that is forgotten are still meaningful, even though there's no people involved. Um, so there's this dispute about where is meaning located. Uh, and it seems like Donnellan is saying, well, you can look at it in two ways. One thing Donnellan 
does say Donilon, as I say, seems to come out more in favor of uh, Russell's theory. Uh, the other thing he says is maybe we can think of definite, definite descriptions used referentially as more like uh, Russell's logically proper names. Remember, Russell says that in the end, the only things that, uh, that really pick out things in the world uh, are logically proper names. And um, logically proper names don't have descriptions attached. They don't uh, refer to things, they, they don't pick things out in the world by means of descriptions. They just directly denote or refer. Um, and he says, well, the referential use of a definite description is doing that because actually the reference is not really helped by the definite description. I'm referring to the guy holding the glass, um, or in the case of Smith's murder is insane. Suppose they've caught Jones and accused him, um, but he's innocent, unbeknownst to everyone but Jones. He's innocent. Uh, I can still refer to, I can still successfully refer to Jones as Smith's murderer because I think he's Smith's murderer. I'm successfully picking him out even though the, my means of doing so, the description, doesn't really apply to him. That sounds like my, my reference is actually done independently of the description, um, and that makes it more like a logically proper name. Um, but it, uh, it's a dispute about a very small section of language that reveals that it's part of the battleground between these larger forces, like different uh, theories about what meaning must be. Um, and it, it's, a, it's just a, a nice discussion, and there are some great examples in it, uh, of um, philosophers using examples as sort of test cases. It's just like what Russell says in On Denoting. If you're going to test a theory, you need to apply it to puzzle, puzzles, says um, Russell. Just like, these are just like experiments that test a theory in science. Uh, in this case, in Donnellan's article, it's nice examples of referring, like Smith's murder is insane, or who is the, who is the man drinking a martini. That's all I'm going to say about that.